With the two surface mount components already soldered in place, I've changed out of my cuffs and links and uh, put a, just got a more pedestrian um, outfit on ready for the regular through hole soldering. The priority is getting the rest of the components in this microcontroller area so that we can actually power up the ESP32 and test the PSRAM and test the micro SD card. So for that, we're going to want to put on the two uh, female connectors on the back of the PCB uh, to plug the ESP32 into. We're going to need R14 and C1 here behind the PSRAM and we need the resistor network uh, to support the micro SD card socket, but that goes on the back side. So let's get on with these two uh, female connectors. As per the silk screen, they go through these two rows of 40 pin, uh, 20 pins, uh, making up what looks like a DIP20 socket um, to take the ESP32. So conceptually, this is about the same size or the same area that an original Z80 microprocessor would have taken up, although I think it is a tenth of an inch wider. Now to hold these in place, you could just tape them down, but it's also quite useful to use some of this remaining um, male pin header and stick that into the sockets to get the spacing between them even. You can see that ties them in quite effectively, but a little bit of tape will be useful just to put over that and hold everything in place so that it doesn't move around while we're tacking it in on the other side. So the trick with putting in any multi-pin package is always just to solder in one pin uh, at each end and check that everything's in the right position before proceeding to solder up the other pins. So we'll just start with a pin at this end and one at the other end. And then we'll just turn things over and take a look. Maybe take the tape out of the way and just make sure that that's all sitting down. It wasn't quite flush, it's just pushed in. I'm just gonna apply a bit more heat to that again. That's looking good. The header will hold the other one in place, but I'll put the tape back down. We'll do the same with the other side. Just soldering the pins at each end. Again, check that everything's okay. And at this point, the two female connectors will be completely stable. We can remove that male pin header and just get on with the slightly tedious job of soldering up the remaining 40 pin, or the balance of the 40 pins.
The next two components are a 10K resistor and a 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor. Just take one of the 10K resistors from that short strip of resistors on tape. And all the capacitors 100 nanofarad. So there's no risk of picking up the wrong one. hole spacing in the circuit board means that you need to bend the legs on the resistors down sharp on the body of the resistor and as per the silk screen these are mounted on the front of the PCB. And then we're looking for the resistor network. Now the resistor network goes on the, the back side of the PCB as per the silk screen. And you'll notice that one end of the resistor network is marked off with an extra in a, a single pin box. And I believe the pad is square where the balance of the pads for that component around. And that corresponds with the end of the resistor network that has the small white round dot on it. Now placing the resistor network in, uh, it's going to drop out if you try turning the board over and this is where having a piece of masking tape on hand is always useful. You can just tape the component in place, turn the board over and again as a multi-pin component we're going to tack in by tack it in by soldering one pin on each end. Remove that tape that was holding it in place. Make sure we're happy with the positioning. Double check that we got the white dot at the right end and then finish off soldering the remaining pins. So there are now enough components in place to fit the ESP32 and to connect it to a PC running a terminal emulator and testing it in as much as to test that the, it's seeing the PS RAM successfully and that it's able to read, initialize and read from the micro SD card. Now, when you're putting in the ESP32, please note, because it's not well indicated on the board, uh, that the USB connector, the micro USB connector goes to the near outside edge of the PCB towards the reset switch. And 
The Wi-Fi antenna sits at this end closest to the two RS32 connectors. Just be careful not to push down on that because you'll bend the resistor or the, ca the capacitor on the other side. So just support it underneath with a hand. And when you're pushing down on the ESP32, don't press on the Wi-Fi antenna because you might bend it. And I have broken one off and they're quite uh, fiddly to try and solder back on successfully. So just pushing down around the edges, we'll seat the ESP32 in those female connectors and now we're ready to take it off uh, and hook it up to a PC over USB and have a look at those, um, the logs that are presented on the console to make sure those components are connected properly. Uh, so I'll cover that in another video.